Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Today I wanted to share with you some techniques and principles that are really useful if you're interested in making glitchy beats. Beats with a lot of intricate details and layers and sound design and complex patterns that are always changing. I love that kind of music because I have a short attention span. Hey look, a nickel. So these principles will apply with a lot of different software and hardware. For the purposes of this demonstration though, I'm using some modules that Tip Top Audio recently sent over because I'm super pumped about them. And it's just nicer to film hardware rather than my computer screen. I'm gonna break down every element of how I approach these kinds of beats, but there is one common thread that runs through everything. This is the key to everything we're gonna talk about today, and that's the balance between what's predictable and unpredictable. I was trying to find a way to make that unpredictable. So let's start with our kick and our snare, the most foundational elements of any beat-driven electronic music. I've set up a really basic pattern here. This is the groove that you'll absorb as a listener, and all the ways I'll change the beat will play off the expectations that come from this established beat. So now I'll introduce some variations and fills. This circadian rhythms module has different modes for fills, so while this is playing, I can hold down these buttons. This channel represents our kick and this is our snare. And it just generates fills. So that's kind of nice when I'm too lazy to uh, program fills. So however you're making your beat variations, you can do this to taste. It's usually pretty standard to have a fill at the end of every eight or 16 bars, but with glitchier kind of music, you might want to sprinkle them in more often. Now you could also go full random with your beats and have no repetition and no expectations, but I generally find that this balance of predictability and unpredictability is more pleasing to the ear. But to give you an example of what full random sounds like, Circadian Rhythms does have a function for that. So maybe for the kind of music you want to make, you want to go full random, or maybe it could be a source of inspiration, like something that you uh, loop and build on. But let's go back to the beat we started with and let's talk about hi-hats. Now we've got some hi-hats in our beat. By the way, all the drum sounds so far are coming from Tip Top's analog clones of the original 808 drum machine circuitry. Super nice. So since the hi-hat is less important than our kick and our snare, I find you have the opportunity to up the unpredictability of it. If we let this beat run, but constantly generate hi-hat fills, it still sounds good. You still have this anchor of the kick and the snare. So I'm just holding down the fill button for the channel that's sending our hi-hat triggers, so it's constantly generating new hi-hat patterns, and they all sound great. So that's just something I've noticed about these kinds of beats. I find that there's an inverse relationship between how important an element is and how much you can vary it or glitch it up before things sound too messy. So here's the next step in our beat. We're gonna add in some random samples. Tip Top sampling module is called One. I've got two of them here. And it comes with this vectors sample pack that's full of a bunch of different stuff. Sound effects, drums, textures, voices, beeps. Just to prove my point about randomness, we're gonna use all of these samples pretty indiscriminately. I have some control voltage going to the module, so every time it's triggered, it selects a completely random sample from the pack. So that's the unpredictable part. The predictable part is that we're only ever gonna play one sample at a time, and we're always gonna trigger it at the same time as the snare drum. So we're filling up our track with this huge assortment of sounds, but we're still helping our listeners' brains hold on because we're connecting these random sounds to a predictable part of our beat. Now if I do some snare fills, this will also trigger on each of those snare hits. And this doesn't have to be the only way to do this. We could have lined these samples up with a different part of the beat or maybe just had them on a repeating rhythm even though the sample order is always changing. There's a lot of different ways to experiment with this, but again, it's that predictability and un snails. The last thing I want to show you today has to do with effects. A really fun way to glitch up your beats is to run certain parts of your beats through effects uh, and turn them on and off rhythmically. And you could experiment with all different kinds of effects. Phaser, delay, reverb, chorus, distortion, 
animation, bit crushing, just punching them in for one or two beats and then turning them off or switching to another effect. And you can do this in a pattern or more randomly. I find the most important thing about this is that you make sure these effects activate and deactivate on beat. So let's go back to our beat for a basic example. I'm running everything except the kick through TipTop's ZDSP effects unit, and I've got this Dragonfly delay cartridge in there which gives us eight different delay algorithms to choose from. So for instance, there's a ping pong delay, a polyrhythmic delay, a filtered delay, and so on. The trick here though is that certain drum beats will cause the ZDSP to change algorithms as well as randomly changing delay parameters like the delay time or the amount of feedback. Here's what that sounds like. Connected to Pixel 2 XL. Thanks, buddy. So you can hear that these delays add a lot of texture to the beat, and interestingly, they're often not even in time with anything. What is in time, though, is every point at which a delay type changes to another delay type. So you can have all this chaos going on in the background, but it's always starting and stopping and changing lined up to different drum beats. It's not just completely random noise, even though it is pretty freaking random. So this is the kind of thing I might manually edit if I were working in software, just going through the timeline and turning effects on and off, or changing parameters, or um, using send effects on certain beats. Of course, the joy of modular is that you can make the machine do that for you, and that is what's happening with this ridiculous module, the Z8000 Matrix Sequencer. Essentially, I'm routing all of the drum rhythms to it, and it is then changing all the delay parameters according to those rhythms. I can explain this better without the patch cables in the way. So you've got these 16 knobs to set control voltage values. They just sweep from low to high, so you can use that to control anything from musical notes, low notes, high notes. Something we were doing just now was using it to control the amount of a delay effect. So no delay and lots of delay. So every time the module receives triggers, it will output certain values set by these knobs. So for example, this red input is connected to this green output here, and that cycles through this top row of knobs. So here it would go low, low, little less than medium, and high. And it would just keep going through those values with each trigger received here. As you can see though, there are a lot of inputs and outputs here. So that is happening on every single row. It's also happening for every single column. And then there are two big sequences that go left to right, top to bottom, and top to bottom, left to right, and those get output here. So this is actually a conglomeration of 10 interrelated sequencers. And then it gets even crazier because for each sequence you can also send a trigger to reverse the direction of the sequence, that's these white inputs, or you can also reset with a trigger, that's these yellow inputs. So no matter where it is in the sequence, it will go back to the first step. So in our patch from before, we had our drum rhythms telling different sequences to advance. I was also using some of the sequences to trigger the direction and reset of other sequences. So it all adds up to multiple complex patterns of values being sent to control and change almost every parameter of our delay effect. And again, the parameter values are pretty random, but the times that they're changing are directly connected to the rhythms of our beat. You get the predictable and the un. So I hope this was helpful for you. This is one of my favorite ways of making beats. I just love that mutating unpredictability. And a huge thanks to Tip Top Audio for supporting my modular journey. I'll link to them below. They've got a whole range of modules available, but I particularly want to highlight, if you're interested in getting into your Iraq modular, their cases cannot be beat for price. They're the most affordable I've ever come across for their size and the power that they offer. You really can't do better on value for money than these Tip Top Mantis cases. So that's it for today. Thank you as always for watching watching and sharing and subscribing. I would love to hear what you think in a comment below and I will see you soon with something new.